Hello and welcome to a new communication course. Today's topic is going to be concentrated on the difference between a participatory communication and an authoritarian communication, which we'll also refer to as military communication or robotic communication. You might be familiar with the terms authority and participation or democracy, and you might also have some ambiguity or questions concerning these two terms. In this video, we're going to explain and compare between authoritarian communication and participatory communication from concrete examples and from a communication approach of theory. So, let's get started. In this neighborhood, we're going to check on two families who seem to adapt two different approaches of communication when it comes to making a decision. Family A and Family B both decided to buy a sofa. This decision was taken differently in the two families. Let's see how. In family A, it was the mother who chose the color of the sofa, the type, the size and the brand. For the mother, this kinds of decision concern only the female head of the family, which is her. In family B, the mother gathered the whole family in order to communicate their opinions about which new sofa they want to buy. For her, this kinds of decision have to do with all family members because she believes that her children and her husband are concerned about any change in the house. Now why in family A the decision to buy a sofa was taken individually by the mother and why it was taken collectively in family B? Making a decision is a passage from an idea made by one's mind to an act. The embodiment of an idea requires not only a determination by the decider but an acceptance of his or her environment. Now when can we know if a decision needs a collective participation and when to know that a decision concerns only one member or a small majority? When we talk about family, enterprise, school, association, society, we automatically refer to a group of people who not only share the same territory, but also who interact, who work together, who depend on one another, who can't live isolated from the other members because each one has a role to play and to contribute and each one brings an added value to the group. So, when we live in a group, there are things that have to be done collectively or decided collectively because the results in any ways will affect each one and that's why the responsibility must be shared since the beginning. Still, why do we monopolize the collective decision by making it our own decision? In each group of people, there is a leader. This leader is usually concerned about the organization of the group and therefore, most important decisions are permitted by this leader. Of course, in some situations, the role of the leader switches or doesn't have to be involved at all. For example, in an enterprise, your boss doesn't have the right to interfere on what you eat, who you're marrying to, and who you hang out with on Saturday night, and so on. We find two forces that are responsible of authoritarian communication. The first force is the heads of the group. Since they have the power over the rest of the group, and by power we mean money, position, relationships, and so on, they make it seem like it's impossible for others to contribute on whatever they're doing in the name of the group they're leading. The other force is tolerance and difference and unconsciousness of the other members of the group. That is to say that these members underestimate their position and their power to bring change, get involved and have an influence as well. The consequences of authoritarian communication can vary from a group to another. In families, for example, authoritarian communication can make a child self-esteem low can diminish the feeling of belonging, can create indifference in the mind, and can separate members from each other which will lead after to selfish behaviors and incomprehension. In the world of companies and enterprises, we call the authoritarian approach of communication Taylorism. Taylorism, which is the mother of organization found by Frederick Taylor and developed later by Henry Ford, sees employees as a force that needs to be controlled and strictly organized. For this model, management is a synonym of control, orders, and efficiency. For Taylor, the production needs a technical efficiency which is not only possible by technologies but also by a controlled management of the human forces of the company. So, if you work as a laborer or as an engineer, you are seen by the company as a workforce and nothing more. And by nothing more, we mean that we don't care about your feelings, we don't care about your subjective identity, about your personality, about your other potentialities, and so on, because you're here to fulfill a job and that's all. The Taylorism model of organization will of course lead to a crisis in the capitalist countries during the last century. The negligence of the human side of employees will emerge a huge movement that calls for a change in the workplace. The birth for the human resources and communication departments and companies is a result of a collective awareness of the importance of human management of employees. And this call for a consideration of people in the workplace is not empathy or sympathy. 
but we discovered that when you respect the human rights and you create an environment of tolerance and freedom without of course neglecting the goals of the enterprise and without allowing chaos, you actually push people to be creative, good contributors, you help them to bring new ideas and new strategy to develop more the projects you work on, the company you belong to and the society you are part of. This is participatory communication with organizational strategies and without chaos. If you want to know more about this point, you can read the bestseller In Search of Excellence by Tom Peters and Robert Waterman. So, what about you? How can you participate in communication in the different groups and communities you belong to and in the world in general? Have you thought about the voice you have in this world and how to make it heard and listened to? Can you think about some places or some situations where you felt that you were dominated or ignored or in contrary, you tried to dominate? Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, comment below and see you soon!